Hi, welcome to our session on Understanding Eureka Math for Guilford County Parent Academy. A few questions we will ask in and answer in this presentation. What is Eureka Math? Why was it chosen for Guilford County Schools? Why does the math look different from how I learned it? Where can I find resources to help my child? And how is this preparing my students for middle and high school? So GCS, we have a definition of curriculum that is a coherent set of materials and resources that are developmentally and cognitively appropriate, provide structured quality tasks that are equitable and inclusive by providing relevant, rigorous, and engaging learning experiences it address gaps in students' knowledge and incorporate authentic assessments. It provides teachers with clear guidance on academic content and skills students should learn across grade levels to meet college and career readiness standards that are taught by all teachers in all schools for all students. So this is what we consider to meet the definition of curriculum in Guilford County Schools. So, Knowing that, let's talk about our current GCS math curriculum, which is Eureka Math. Eureka is aligned to the standards. It is coherent from kindergarten to fifth grade. The knowledge builds, and it's also comprehensive. We have print, we have digital, and we also have job embedded coaching support for teachers. So the first thing we do when we look at curriculum resources in Guilford County is we look at Ed Report, which is an independent um, curriculum review committee that is natural, nationally known. Uh, and its sole job is an independent third party reviewer of curriculum. They look at focus, coherence, rigor, mathematical practices, and usability. And Eureka Math had the highest rating of all of the K-8 curricula that were evaluated nationwide at all green scores. So let's take a look at our implementation timeline. We had a district curriculum task force that assembled in the 2015-16 school year. Teachers and curriculum leaders from across the district viewed curriculum from different organizations. We had different vendors that came in to present. Eureka was unanimously selected. We piloted in 2015-16 in two elementary schools. Then in 2016-17, 29 schools used the resources. And we moved to full district-wide implementation in 2017-2018. Eureka books uh, for students. We have three different books that students receive. They receive the Learn books which is where students have the application problems, the problem sets, the exit tickets, and different templates um, for models and data sets that students will use. This is kind of their in-class activity instruction book. Students also have a book called Practice. This is where students have their daily fluency and sprints that make sure that they keep um, their math procedural fluency, very efficient. Then the third book that students have is the Succeed book. And this has additional problem sets that uh, lots of time teachers use as homework. And we also have homework helpers that are in this book. So every problem set, additional problem set and homework assignment has a homework helper that has a set of worked examples that show how similar problems are solved. So this is a great resource for families to use at home when they're working on math with their students. The next thing we're gonna talk about with Eureka are the structure and the models in the curriculum. So the curriculum structure K-8 with our elementary and math curriculum, we start with an invitation to math or an engaging strategy. So in Eureka, students start every day with a fluency or sprint. Uh, lots of times these include physical movement, students are up around the classroom. It's a really big motivator um, and a way to get students excited about math. Uh, every lesson has opportunities for conceptual development and application. And then lessons also have daily exit tickets that teachers can use as a formative assessment. So what that means is that when students leave class, 
they have kind of like a problem of the day that they do as they're leaving and teachers can collect that to determine how much students learn that day and that helps them plan their instruction for the next day. And our math curriculum, elementary, middle, and high, provide a common language for students to use to make sense of mathematics. I think that is one of the most important pieces. I always like to ask, why do we need change? I hear from parents a lot. Why does math look different than the way that I learned it? So I want you to think back to your time in math class, specifically learning how to solve word problems. What strategy did you use? A lot of you probably were thinking keywords. You learned that when you see the word all together, it means add, or when you see the words um, left or take away, that it means subtract. So let's take a look at this example, third grade word problem. Jen and Whitney have 17 purple stickers all together. Jen has 12, how many does Whitney have? If you used your keyword strategy, Students would say, oh, I see the word all together, and they would add 17 plus 12, when in fact that is not the answer to this problem. So we really want students to think about the structure of problems and why we use operations instead of relying on keywords, because lots of times keywords lead to incorrect answers. One of the models that Eureka Math uses is number bonds. So if you have a child, using Eureka Math, you have probably seen this. Uh, here's an example of how I might break up or decompose the number eight into five plus three. But notice the units. Students see that eight cars is the same as five cars plus three cars. They see that also works for eight tens, eight eighths. You can see how we're leading into fractions, measurement, um, multiplication, fractions. We look into 800 is the same as 500 plus 300. I see my multiplication backs and then it leads into algebra with variables that 8x is the same as 5x plus 3x. So you can see on the top left hand corner what kindergarten students might learn and how it progresses all the way up to middle school really helping see students see the structure of numbers. So number bonds will continue from kindergarten um, through middle school. We also use uh, tape diagrams as a way for students to understand and visualize a word problem. So you'll see lots of examples of tape diagrams here. And then we could even use tape diagrams and number bonds to solve word problems. So if I had this problem, Zoe had some stamps. She gave two-fifths of the stamps to Lionel. She used one-third of the remaining stamps to mail thank you notes. She has 14 stamps left. I always like to ask families how they would try to solve this, and a lot of them try to do some algebra and some equations. But when, I act, when students visualize this, they see it with a tape diagram. So I want to know how many stamps Zoe had when she started. So if I draw a tape diagram to represent Zoe's stamps, and she gave two-fifths of the stamps to Lionel. So you can see I've shaded in two-fifths, okay? She used a third of the remaining stamps, well that's these three over here. She used one of those to mail thank you notes, and then she has 14 left. So these two rectangles must equal 14. So if those equal 14, then each one equals 7. And if each one of these rectangles is seven, there are five rectangles, so Zoe had 35 stamps. This is a way for students to visualize problems, and we use tape diagrams uh, through elementary and middle school. So why is it so important to have a common language and structure, elementary through middle through high school? Well, the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction analyzed thousands of wrong answers for multiple years on our state end of grade testing. This means our math EOGs and our math EOCs. And they found the number one trend was that students were incorrectly using tricks or shortcuts that they had learned. So they were doing things like relying on keywords to get that trick wrong answer or trying to use shortcuts their teachers had given them and using them incorrectly because they didn't understand the tricks. 
If we want to prepare students for college and career, they need to be able to apply skills that they have learned in new situations. And to do that, you have to understand why the math works, not a series of tricks and shortcuts that change from year to year. Always like to show families. These are some of our high school math standards that students should be proficient at before they can graduate. So if you'll notice, and these are just Math 1 standards, which students usually take in 8th um, or ninth grade. So this is what we used to call Algebra 1. So look at the words in these standards. Students have to justify. If you look at the words in green, they have to create, and they have to explain why. So we need to make sure that we're producing students that are thinkers and understand the math in order for them to be successful on these high school standards so that they can be college and career ready. So next we're going to talk about parent support. So I want to talk about the parent support, family support that we provide for Eureka Math. Our first are suggestions about how to talk to uh, your child at home about the concepts they are learning. Some questions we suggest asking include, well, can you explain that? What strategy did you use? And how else can you solve it? Notice we're not asking you to teach the math, that's up to the teacher. But if you can just uh, help students be curious about the math, ask questions, ask them to explain, see if they can explain the math. If they can explain what they're doing, that is a great sign that they are learning. Um, remember to just be positive about your child's math education and try to stay away from phrases like, I'm not a math person. I uh, always like to tell children and adults, hey, have you ever done math? Are you a person? Then yes, you are a math person. So just try to be positive about math experiences. Uh, there's a lot of math anxiety out there. So the more you can do to reduce that, the better. And please use the math parent resources that we've provided. These parent tip sheets can be found on the Eureka Great Minds website. And I'm going to talk about that on the next slide. And remember those homework helpers, we talked about those earlier, are in the Eureka practice books. So if students are bringing home homework, they should always have a homework helper that comes along with it that shows uh, very similar problems and how they are worked out. Uh, with lots of detail and guidance given so that you'll have a resource if students um, in your home are asking that you can use to help guide their thinking. So we're going to talk about these tips for parents next and what you need to do to make sure you have a Eureka account. So in order to get a Eureka account, what you're going to want to do is go to this website greatminds.org. You can click there to get an account, greatminds.org slash sign up to get a free parent account. You'll select parent as your role, click create, and then you'll have a dashboard where you'll be able to shop for materials, but don't worry, all the materials are, are free. So you would choose the different tip sheets from different grade levels, add them to your account, and then every time you log in, they're there for you. Again, everything uh, is free that you will add to your dashboard as a parent. So these are all resources that we are providing at no cost to you. Um, so please take advantage of these resources. If after viewing this presentation, you have further questions, you can contact me. My name is Jen Arberg, and I'm our K-12 Math Director, and you can reach me at arbergj at gcsnc.com. We thank you for listening and for being an advocate for your children and supporting their education. So please reach out, and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Have a wonderful day.